Hey guys, what's going on? Aaron Garza here, founder of Pureline Nutrition, and um, check it out. So we are going to be releasing a new product in the next few days here at Pureline, and um, it's a CBD product. Uh, for those of you joining us live, hope you guys are doing well. We're on Facebook and Instagram. Um, I'm here with a good buddy of mine, and he's probably the guy that I know that has the most knowledge of CBD of anybody I've ever met. Okay, Tom is uh, Tom Beagley. This is a uh, Tom, he's actually the co-founder of a company called G&B Innovations and do a lot of CBD related products. And um, I've asked him to come on today to kind of give us some info on CBD and um, how the technology that we're using in our CBD product is gonna be pretty much different than anything uh, you've ever experienced before. Uh, I think a lot of us, it's me especially Tom, I, I've, you know, I see all these CBD shops coming around. I see, you know, like everywhere I go, it's smoke shops, CBD shops. You know, this whole thing is just getting like more and more popular. Um, and I'll be honest with you, I took CBD like when it first came out, uh, maybe, you know, six months to seven months ago. It was just starting to be in the entry phases. And I didn't really feel much, you know. I was just kind of like, eh, eh, I guess it's all right. It does, I guess. I don't know. People were talking about they felt great and clear and relaxed. And I was kind of like, mm, you know, basically just whatever. Uh, but... Tom explained some interesting things to me, and he really uh, has a great grasp on CBD. So what I wanted to do today is have a little bit of a conversation with him and uh, allow him to give you some insight. And I guess the best place to start, Tom, is just kind of tell me, what is CBD? I mean, because you hear all about it. I know we've had these conversations, you go into real depth about it, but could you give us like a general idea of what it is, how it works? Sure, absolutely. So CBD is an acronym. It stands for cannabidiol. Um, your body has a complete set of cannabinoid receptors all throughout your body. So essentially what CBD is, is it is a molecule that will attach to these receptors and will provide a range of relief uh, from you know sciatic pain to chronic pain to migraines to inflammation, anxiety. I mean, you pretty much name it, you go on down the line. Is this like instant? Like how does it, what do you feel it like within an hour or two? Or do you have to like build up a dose like you would with certain medications to start feeling it in your body? Or how's that work? So it's a little bit of yes, a little bit of column A, a little column B. Okay. Um, you're really, once you start getting down into the quality of the product, the delivery system of the product, which we'll talk on in a little bit, um, those are where you're going to start to see the variances and where you see the differences. Some things will set themselves apart from others. So I, I think one of the things that I guess a lot of people want to know about and that would probably make it, um, you know, extremely, I think it's important to address right away is, you know, people think CBD, they think marijuana. Correct. They're like, whoa, whoa this is, you know, I, I don't want to take this. You know, this is just, I'm, I'm not part of that world. What's the thing that we're looking at? I know THC is the active component in marijuana that produces the high and the stuff like that. Um, but what's the difference here? And you know, what is CBD versus THC? And how can people be or feel safe that you know what I'm not taking something illegal that's going to affect you know the way that I think? Right. Um, I first always address the legality because I think that's number one the concern that people are, true, are experiencing. True. Good point. Um, so what we're talking about here specifically with with this product and, and the products that we'll continue to talk about, um, or that they are all derived from what's known as industrial hemp. Okay. Industrial hemp simply means that hemp is the derivative and CBD is the derivative of said hemp. Okay. Um, as long as that hemp is below 0.3 percent THC, which is a very, very, very small number. Um, it is considered legal as an agricultural commodity. End of story. Okay. Okay. Uh, so, from a legality perspective, as long as you're, you can confirm that your product is coming from hemp and that it meets that THC standard. That's. And how about from a psychoactive perspective? Now, yeah. now, so CBD in itself is actually two things. It is non-psychoactive and it's antipsychotic. Okay. So what this really means is number one, it's not gonna get you high. You don't run the risk of even remotely feeling any kind of, I would call it euphoria. Um, you're really, what you're gonna experience is, and, I, and I've told you this before, it's almost you just forget that you had the problem. It just sort of leaves you. Hmm. Um, it's not a, you don't feel up, it's not like taking a stimulant where you're gonna know when it's working because you know, you're gonna be getting busy and you're gonna be on your feet moving around. This, you may have, say, elbow pain, or you might have a headache, or you're just really stressed out. Um, you take CBD, depending on the, the type of CBD, delivery system, the quality of the CBD, you know, within a reasonable amount of time, you may just all of a sudden stand up and say, oh, my headache's gone, or, you know, my elbow doesn't hurt anymore, or... So really, you know, that, that's awesome. So really, there's no 
need to worry about the high or psychoactive no, property. And, and that's where I go back to the, the, the real differentiator is that it comes from hemp. Uh -huh. Just a quick, quick rundown on that. People refer to this. Cannabis is used so incorrectly across the industry. Cannabis refers to both marijuana and hemp. So when you hear people talk about cannabis, don't be so quick to jump to, oh, it's the bad stuff, it's the stuff that's gonna get me high. Cannabis talks about both are part of the same family. Mm. Um, hemp though, just to give a, a little bit more history, hemp is primarily going to be CBD dominant. Mm. Very little THC to begin with. Whereas marijuana is going to be THC dominant with, for the most part, a much smaller content of CBD. So it's kind of like we're getting all the good stuff and none of the bad stuff when you're taking CBD. And, from, a, from a legality perspective, absolutely. And it's funny because I have friends that, uh, you know, we don't use marijuana or, you know, haven't done it in 20 some years. And it's funny, you know, they, they immediately are kind of like, dude, you know, I don't got to take anything that's going to you know, put that stuff in my body. And it's hard to really explain to them that CBD is not marijuana, you know, technically, you know, it's, it's something that. No, it's absolutely not. I yeah. mean, it's, it's not. I mean, uh, you can get CBD for marijuana but it is actually illegal to derive CBD from marijuana, period. So okay. you, the only legal way you can get a hold of this stuff through the mainstream market where you're gonna be having people playing above board and doing things the right way is, is gonna be hemp-derived CBD. Now, before we get into like this new next generation CBD that we kind of are bringing out and talk about what the difference is between what we have here and what's being sold in the majority of you know, CBD shops across the nation, I wanted to ask you, so for a guy that works out or a female that, you know, is trying to lose weight, uh, the average 28 to 45 year old, what's the benefit that they would see taking a CBD product? Is there something there that, you know, is there a reason for them to even consider it or is it just for the people who want to relax and, you know, have anti-inflammation type stuff? So I think the answer broadly is yes. Okay. <laughs> but uh, with the specifics to those that are active, the pe folks that are exercising, working out, how they might incorporate that or how they might see benefits. Um, well, CBD just in general is a healing compound. Okay. So let's say for example, you were to, you were to add CBD into your BCAA and glutamine regimen. Uh, that would also aid in the reparation of cells through that process. So as you damage those through whether it's you know the stress of working out or um, through just your heavy your heavy work ethic and in the gym or any sustained injuries or chronic injuries that you're dealing with, uh, short term use of that will allow you to regain say the mobility that you might need to get back in and get the quality of your workouts back up to achieve your goals. Whereas long term prolonged use. Is, is regenerative. So if you have you know some tissue problems, if I mean they use this stuff in ADD, ADHD because it sort of builds a bridge to where there may be some missing links, some misfires, some you know not to get too scientific, but you know neurologically there may be some pathways that aren't working right. Hmm. Um, CBD can get in there, either course correct or bring about some efficiencies in the way that your body is utilizing the nutrients available, as well as the CBD getting in and providing the actual benefits. That's that amazing, man. That's really interesting. Um, so, I mean, I, it's funny that you mentioned that because one of the, the ways that I take it and that I found the most beneficial with the newer form of CD, CBD that we're going to talk about in a bit um, is that I use it post-workout. And the reason I found it beneficial post-workout is because Usually I'll take a little bit of stimulant before I go to the gym, you know, pre-workout, something to get me going. And then once the adrenaline gets going, I find that after the workout, it usually I'm still a little ramped up and amped up and it takes me a little time to just get back into my flow of everyday clarity and being able to communicate normally. <laughs> uh, but what I do now is I take a couple of soft gels of CBD as I'm leaving the gym with my post-workout shake. And I notice that within like 45 to 50 minutes, I just feel like, Balance, zeroed in, ready to rock. Kind of bounce back. Yeah, from what you've I don't feel all kind of like jacked and weird, and right. you know, I just feel better. You know, I, I can't explain it. It's a really, uh, it's not euphoria at all. It's just zeroed in, like I'm ready to start. I kind of like I had a cup of coffee in the morning, and I'm back to normal, ready to work again. So, very interesting. Now, one of the things that I wanted to talk about in particular today is this new form of CBD that we're releasing, and the reason. Um, I want to talk about it is because I was pretty blown away when you started telling me the statistics um, in terms of absorption rates of CBD. You know, for the most part, the average Mike, John, and Sally 
uh, my mom, Diane, that goes out to the CBD smoke shop because that's where they sell it. She goes and she buys a CBD product and she thinks, hey, great, you know, I'm getting a 25 milligram soft gel of CBD. Uh, this stuff is awesome. I'm going to use it. And, and you were explaining to me, to, to me that, you know, the fat that these are encased in, they're little soft gels. A lot of them are what? Coconut? What, what's the main oil? Uh, there's a lot of carriers. Typically, you're going to see coconut, almond, MCT, or hemp. Those are typical. So you were telling me that basically, more than 90% of the CBD out there that's fat soluble, that's in these little fat encased soft gels, is not really well absorbed by the body. Is that correct? I would say it's higher than that, to be honest. You know, when you're when you're saying, when you're specifically referring to fat soluble, you're really referring to 100% population. Now, in fat soluble CBD, things like MCT might enhance the absorption just by its own default properties, but you're really looking at marginal. So maybe from 5%, it goes to 7%. But overall, you're really, when you're talking about fat soluble, your absorption rate's gonna be in the single digits and it's gonna be. So let's good. say Diane goes to the smoke shop. She buys, you know, Olivia Newton-John's CBD brand and it's 25 milligrams. How much of that is, and it's fat soluble, how much of that is actually getting into her bloodstream, creating an effect? So that's a great question. Um, 25 milligrams as a dose here, what we're looking at is about a 5% absorption rate. So doing some quick math in my head, 5% uh, absorption rate of 25 milligrams of CBD is going to be no more than one, maybe one and a half milligrams of CBD really absorbed. So you're telling me that for a 25 milligram CBD soft gel, the majority of people out there that are taking a fat soluble CBD soft gel are only getting about one to two milligrams of real CBD in the bloodstream? I'm actually going further than that. I'm saying that any fat soluble CBD product, whether it's a tincture, an edible, a uh, soft gel, whatever you have it, if it is fat soluble, you're going to experience the same absorption problems across the board. A lot of the, the stomach, you know, destroys a lot of that, those particles and those compounds, the liver through the processing destroys a lot of that stuff. So, so why have they been doing this? I mean, what, what is the reason it's out there in such volume that that's what people are using well i think uh, i think it's uh, the evolution of the industry to, to begin with i think that um when we realized that cbd was so profound and had so many medicinal uses obviously here in the united states we've had a ban on it for so long that no research was allowed but we've sat and watched israel and australia and countries all over the world that have been doing that research that have gotten the grants and have actually done this and so while we collectively in America have sat back and said, oh, we don't have any research. Really, that's not true. There's evidence everywhere that suggests that these things are, are helping. But I think initially in its evolution, it's, it was a very simple pathway. People would get a plant, they would process it, they would take that and they would put it into a product. So they weren't really thinking beyond the lengths of what's the absorption gonna be here. But um, you know, once we get into talking about to this product, they were just considering we got to get CBD in, in yeah, and yeah, sell it yeah. as soon as I mean, possible. It, it's, it, it turned out, it started off sort of like a trend, but then it became a movement and now it's just exploded. So I think that, you know, you have innovation that mm. comes in waves mm. as things move on, right? Makes sense. You know, when we first started out, all we had was tinctures. It's like, let me, let me give you an example that my audience and probably people that I know would relate to. It's like in the beginning when protein powder came out, we had egg protein powder and milk powder, you know, and it was just literally you would absorb nothing. You you know, if it was 25 grams of protein, you maybe were getting five and the rest you were just moving through. Um, and then eventually you've got all these processes that create isolates and different derivatives of protein that are more absorbed. Same thing here, essentially. Correct, correct. Absolutely. So with that being said then, um, you know, I was blown away. When I heard that statistic, when I heard the number, I'm sitting there thinking, Jesus, because I know how much CBD costs. I mean, you can go to some of these stores and a bottle will cost you about a hundred bucks and you're sitting there like, holy cow, you know, a hundred dollars for 30 soft gels. And when I hear this information, I'm like, you're only getting one to two milligrams in your system working, which to be honest, I think was one of the big reasons I never felt anything. You know, when I took it initially, Absolutely. I was just like, dude, this isn't doing nothing man I, I don't feel a damn thing from this so um lo and behold enter some new technology uh you know some studies out of israel showed us that there's some research that indicated that we could create more or i should say they could create more uh absorbable and efficient cbd tech products can you kind of give us a basic idea of how that works and what they're doing to make this new version of cbd sure um so essentially, I mean, first and foremost, I think the statistics are really profound. So where you're looking at uh, water solubility, in a sense, enhances 
the delivery of this product. And it's not just limited to this. So nanotechnology, which is what is being used to create water soluble CBD, is actually present in a lot of other industries and in cosmetics and topicals and things like that. They have to find a way to better deliver things through the skin or prevent wasting as it goes through your body. So I think that sense of innovation where we started rolling things out is sort of a guessing game, figuring out what your dosage should be. It was a guessing game of how much do I need, how little do I need. You know, you said, for example, right. that you took some stuff that wasn't hitting it. Typical person is going to say, okay, I'm going to go back to the store and I'm going to buy triple the dose of what it was, which also means you're going to probably spend three times that amount of money. And for what a marginal return because at the end of the day you're still only getting five percent right, right so you know you're really just adding an exponent to your cost and then you bring it down to here what water solubility does is that it greatly enhances greatly enhances the absorption rate in some cases 50 percent some cases all the way up to 97 percent wow so whereas you know you may start you could start with a smaller dose um, which puts less cbd less cannabis less cannabis in your system altogether mm -hmm but provides a, a more potent form. It yields CBD. a higher percentage Absolutely. of the bloodstream. Yep. So let's say for example, um, you know, the product that we're coming out with Regen CBD, we use a patented trademark type of CD called Next CBD, which is, um, give me a little info on it. I know that it's a liposomal delivery and it has right. nanotechnology. Essentially all it, that stuff means that with five milligrams of this, you're getting 97% of that into Correct. your bloodstream? Correct. So to put it plainly, whereas you might have, let's take the, the 3,000 milligram tincture example because it's a good comparison. 3,000 milligram tincture mm -hmm. over 30 servings. How much is that per serving? 100 milligrams a serving. So 100 milligrams per serving. 100 milligrams a serving. So 100 milligrams per serving at a 5% absorption rate of fat soluble CBD will yield you Five milligrams. milligrams. So when I take a hundred milligrams of dropper mm -hmm. of the tincture, it's giving me a hundred milligrams of CBD. But because I'm only absorbing five percent of that, I'm only getting five milligrams. Correct. Right. So the downside to that is you're just putting a lot of stuff in your system that's really not going to get used, um, and then you're going to have a higher cannabis content float around your body. It's not necessarily a concern. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you're using a full spectrum, when you're using things that may not in a tincture form or something like that where you know there is maybe still allowable but some THC present um, and you're taking it such a large dose you're almost stretching the THC further and putting yourself at a greater risk. Mm, makes sense, makes sense. As opposed to five milligrams Correct. that's 97 percent absorbable you're automatically getting what 4.5 or something milligrams yeah. of active I think, it's, I think it comes out to about 4.8 Wow, four point eight. You're, you're right about getting five five total milligrams from a five milligram dose. So, which is really interesting. I think it's an important point to make because um, you know people tend to look at milligram strength. So they say they go in there and they're like, oh, you know what? I've got this bottle, but they're twenty five milligrams soft gels per serving, or thirty or fifty milligrams. The price goes up. It escalates extremely. Like you said, it just exponentially grows. Yet they're only getting a tiny percentage yeah. of that in their bloodstream. Where this CBD, the new CBD that we're talking about has a five milligram dose, but you're getting 97% of that. You're getting 4.8 milligrams every time you take it. That's a huge differentiation point. Absolutely. So, I mean, I think that's just not, what makes it, or what makes this and this technology uh, what it is? Why is it that they're able to absorb more from such a small milligram dosage? Simply put, the concept of nanotechnology is just shrinking molecules. So these things, when you take a fat, for example, um, you're a fitness professional, uh, very familiar in the industry, right? right. Um, so you're aware that fat has a propensity to be stored rather than used as energy, depending on the body. But for the most part, fat doesn't absorb as well as maybe something else that you right. put in your Makes body. Makes sense. Uh, the same case is true here. You put something fat-based in your system, you're going to be faced with the same obstacles. When you take that out of the equation, you bypass some of the places in your GI system that are going to break that down, mm. waste it, purge it, do whatever it will with it. You're not going to go through that process with this. Mm. So it's it's almost like it's almost like a delayed release in a sense that it's going to stay intact through your system until it's time to go to work. Gotcha. The result in that is though a much faster absorption. So in other words, where you may maybe wait 30, 45 minutes for a tincture to kick in, let's say you're having an anxiety attack. Well, you could put the droppers in your mouth, but for 45 minutes, you gotta figure out 
how to keep your life together. Right? <laughs> uh, and so what's so profound about, about this CBD is that, you know, I would say probably 90% of the people we've had try it, 90% of the people we've polled about this stuff, that I put the product in their hand, they put it in their mouth. Within five minutes, they're over tapping me on the shoulder like, is it possible for this to be working already? Wow. I mean, it's so profound. So, you know, those of you that are suffering from, you know, a doctor prescription, anti-anxiety medicine, you know, you kind of owe it to yourself, not just to your pocketbook, but you know, to your own overall holistic health to give something like this a try because if you can knock that anxiety out, and don't get me wrong, a lot of those medicines are going to make you feel a certain way so that it takes you away from the feeling that you have. What this allows you to do is stay in control. Gotcha. It allows you to kind of own things, just like you mentioned earlier. Zero, yeah. That it just kind of calms down. The things slow down. You're able to zero in, and and so I, I personally, from this product, I mean, you're you're getting a little bit more than you would usually get because of the quality of this product. Right. You get that mental boost. You get that anxiety relief. You get that inflammation relief and the chronic pain and all those things. So you kind of is a total encapsulation. Whereas the profile of full spectrum CBD that's in this has the right cannabinoids to produce all those different categories wow. that are gonna help you. Now, I think one of the bigger questions that I know a lot of people are gonna have that are watching this is, am I at risk in any way, shape, or form for being testing or testing positive for you know, any kind of marijuana or THC when I do my blood test? For example, you know, the police officer sure. or you know, the teacher, whoever has to go through these random drug tests at their work, you know, would they come up positive with something like this? So there's two answers to that question. Okay. I'm, I'm a former Marine, so I'm, I'm familiar with the way that this process works. Um, and, and really, the first thing I wanna say is you're always going to wanna reach out. If you, if you have a job, if you're in the military, in any kind of employment, the first thing you wanna do is you're gonna reach out, find out your company policy on, on both the testing for THC and the testing for CBD. Okay. Um, very limited testing available for CBD. Most prominently, that's seen in uh, military and law enforcement. So make sure you check. Always check first with your command to make sure that they're not going to be tested because it could be all well and good. There's no THC in here. But if you take CBD and they're testing for CBD and that's something in the policy that says you're not allowed to take CBD. So that is something they test for sometimes. Yes, it can be. So that's why the most important thing is that if you are if you are doing a UA, your analysis at any point in time, you know, before you jump on a product, it, it does you service to go to your HR or go to your command and say, hey, you know, I'd like to, to capture the policy on what is allowable and what is not allowable. Do your diligence, be responsible, just like anything else that you would do. Gotcha. Besides that now, though, this product actually is a zero THC product. Gotcha. Um, meaning that not only is there no detectable amount of THC in this product, but the amount that probably even exists is next to a, a millionth of a decimal. I mean, you're talking about this stuff will never aggregately add up to anything on the THC side that you will ever have to worry about. Gotcha, gotcha. That's awesome to know because I know a lot of people would be concerned about that. And it's a great point. If indeed your organization, is the NFL, NBA, are they testing for CBD? So there's a lot of talk about those things and those things are coming. Um, Adam Silver, the commissioner of the NBA, has very much engaged in the talks of actually allowing for medicinal use of marijuana in the NBA. So CBD is right there. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of the NBA players, especially a lot of the retired NBA players are coming together now, launching their businesses and working with the NBA Players Association to try to build that into the next collective bargaining agreement. I know that, uh, especially with the NFL, now that we're seeing a lot of the brain damage and yes. the issues that are happening after these guys have been out of the you know league for 10 to 15 years, that's something that CBD could potentially be beneficial for. Correct, and there's actually a lot of buzz around the NFL right now. Um, I know that Roger Goodell is looking into it. I know a lot of the players are really pro, and I think you know this ties into a much deeper sure. conversation. But but the overall health of the players has become a concern. Absolutely. And as that's become more of a concern, these are the kinds of things that the CBD's power and its combination and other medicines and things like that can just dramatically help prevent or recover from things that may not have been recoverable from before. Um, yeah. We had we had a, 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 a child with autism not too long ago that I was talking to a mother um, whose child had had autism and hadn't spoken in years and started taking some water soluble CBD and within two days started speaking again. Dang. So I mean, Dang. just for the the just is so profound to think that 
you could have so much going on neurologically, but something as simple as this, a plant that was used in textiles, that's been used to make baskets and, and shirts and hats and all that stuff could also be healing our bodies. That's actually, you know, what I was going to ask you next. You just kind of went into it. So from your experience, you know, I know you've been in depth in, in the cannabinoid world and not only just manufacturing, but consulting and stuff like that. Um, what are some of the more common things that you consistently see CBD work on that you can say, oh, dude, no. this, I, I, I this is the one thing that I always go to, like you said, with the kids. Um, but is there anything else that just kind of, you know, sparks like that? This is the one thing I see it very beneficial for. I'll, I'll tell you right off the bat, um, and forgive me for doing a little storytelling here. No, but, please. But uh, you know, the, one of the very first things that sticks in my mind when uh, when we were working on developing um, another product that we were working on was a topical. Um, we we went. My grandmother has horrible rheumatoid arthritis to the point where you know her hands are all shifted to one side. Now, to understand some context, my grandmother played the piano her whole life. She is piano lessons, she sings, she's in the master choirs. She's just very active, especially with her hands. But as she's gotten older and that arthritis has gotten worse, she can't really even hold a pot to cook in for long enough before her hand cramps up or she gets pain, just switch hands or hand off to my, my grandfather. Um, we were sitting at breakfast one morning, and it was when I had the first sample bottle, and I rolled it on her hands, and, uh, and a few minutes later, she started going like this to me, and I'm like, oh, what am I doing? You know, what did I do? And just real quick to interrupt Tom, sorry, but uh, he's talking about another product that Tom actually manufactures called 911 Roll-On. You go to 911rolloncom That's correct. And that's the product he's referring to, so go ahead. I'm sorry. So um, we, we took this, this roll-on product, we put it right on top of my grandma's hands where she had a lot of the pain. And a few minutes later, she's shaking her fist at me. I was like, all right, what did I do? Does it hurt her? What, you know, what did I screw up? Yeah. And she goes, no. She said, I, I haven't made a fist in five years. Wow. And, and she was like, and I'm making a tight fist. And she's just like, let me know as soon as I can get that. Wow. You know, because my stepfather has two torn rotator cuffs. He was probably, I don't want to discredit him by saying he wasn't a supporter, but he was probably the biggest doubter of CBD in general just because of the whole stigma around cannabis. Um, but I finally quartered him one time and I said, look man, what do you have to lose? So we rolled it on his shoulders. He sat down that night, he had a couple beers, and he leans over to my mom and he says, you know, I'm not sure if it's the beers or the <laughs> CBD, but you know, my shoulders don't hurt. Wow. Well, I woke up the next morning and called me way earlier than I like to be woken up and said, you know, hey dude, I, I know it's early, but I just gotta tell you, I woke up, I put this on yesterday at 4 p.m. I woke up at seven o'clock this morning and I have no pain in my shoulders. Wow. And we're talking about torn rotator cuffs. Now this is gonna apply to everybody. And to, does it apply to also like CBD orally that would be taken? Correct, so absolutely. Just CBD in general has absolutely. these benefits. Absolutely, absolutely. The, the, the biggest benefits I see to really just straight yeah. up answer your question, um, any kind of inflammation, um, especially for those who work out that are active, you're just going to have inflammation, whether it's your feet, your knees, you know, wherever you have that pain. Um, it's going to really make a big impact on that. Anxiety is another one. I see people every day, um, you know, people as close as next door and, you know, down the street and all these people are, are I mean, anxiety is a real thing. I mean, depression is a real thing we're going through right now. And so when I've seen people implement CBD into the regimens, they're able to go off their prescription medications. They're able to kind of go at it alone, and it gives them a sense of confidence that they can handle this. In that area specifically, and I know we've talked a lot about your combat, you know, in Fallujah and stuff, has there been a entryway into PTSD and stuff like that? Absolutely, absolutely. There's, there's lots of actually different angles that it's being utilized in, and only recently is the VA starting to really entertain the idea that that maybe looking into allowing or prescribing or encouraging the use of CBD could potentially combat a lot of the opioid crisis that's going on right now. Wow. Pe specifically for people with pain, a lot of the guys that, that I served with, myself included, that got banged up, um, you know, we have a lot of just chronic pain. So that's where we started looking at CBD was because, you know, that for me was like, I didn't want to get on opioids. I didn't want to get hooked on pain meds and you know, relying on somebody else to write me a script for, excuse me, for something that I, you know, really didn't want to put in my body because I know it's, as well as it might help me in the short term, in the long term, it's going to wreak havoc on my system. Wow. And so I was more concerned in long, you know, longevity and, and healing myself and taking care of myself. I'm a little bit of a stubborn guy, so that had a lot to do with it. But in the end, 
Um, you know, I see more and more of my friends, especially the guys that I served with, reaching out to me saying, hey, dude, you know, I'm still, I'm still having a lot of trouble with my knees after I get hit with that bomb, or I, I got, you know, I got messed up pretty good this one time and I'm having a lot of trouble recovering. Um, people who have a lot of back issues, specifically sciatica, which where you would think is really not something that's solvable. I mean, it's a nerve related issue. It's hard to really treat that. Um, I've seen offices full of behavioral therapists just all pick it up. I've seen chiropractors test it once on their clients and say, take this and come see me half the time you're used to seeing me. Wow. Uh, wow. So it's, you know, even if it's not a complete stopgap measure, it still can be something to add to your regimen to lighten the load of your medication intake, uh, to help your therapy, to help the progress in whatever direction you're going with regard to that. Awesome. Well, guys, that uh, well, first Tom, thanks for coming in and telling, and giving us kind of a little uh, 101 on CBD and exactly how it works, and what it does, and how what is out there is completely different uh, from what you're going to be seeing and stuff like our Regen CBD, Pureline Nutrition's new CBD that we're releasing this week. Um, you can get it at thepureline.com, or if you have a, um, if you're in a, in a location in Texas where one of our nutrition stores is at, McAllen, Brownsville, San Antonio, Corpus, or Austin, uh, you can drop by and pick it up there too. I want to thank Tom uh, for being here and giving us insight on CBD. Tom, let them know where they can find you at. I, I know your email is. Sure. Yeah, you can get me at tom at 911rollon.com. That's all one word, R-O-L-L-O-N, tom at 911rollon.com. Again, our site is 911rollon.com. Um, go to the site, check it out. There's a lot of good information, including some FAQs and some really unique formulations that we've included. These guys actually have a very, very good roll-on product that's got topical uh, delivery system. We've been talking about delivery systems with the CBD to get it into your system fast. And they can actually, uh, you could combine it with an oral CBD to get the most from your, you know, inflammation and pain and things like that. So check him out. Um, and if you have any questions, guys, feel free to always call us at 1-800-632-1402 and email us at info at thepureline.com. We hope to see you this week. If you're watching this on Facebook or social media, please like and share this with your friends. Uh, if you're watching this later on YouTube, we appreciate you. Make sure and subscribe to our channel. We'll keep putting out good content for you guys. All right. Hope you have a great week. We will talk to you guys soon.